a statistical approach to the reproducibility crisis. Currently, many research fields are undergoing what experimentalists have dubbed a reproducibility crisis, as they analyze the characteristics of deeply complex systems, researchers often find that their results greatly differ from those of previous studies, even though the same system was measured. The consequences of this crisis are felt particularly strongly in medicine and social sciences, yet its effects also extend to many other fields across biology, chemistry and physics. Dr. Stanley Luck at the Science, Technology and Research Institute of Delaware explores the reasons behind this inherent inability to reproduce experimental results. In recent years, statisticians have proposed that the mathematical techniques we use to describe experiments on complex systems could lie at the root of the problem. In order to move past the reproducibility crisis, it may be crucial for experimentalists to rethink these methods. Within complex systems of variables, close relationships can form between pairs of interacting elements, so that any change in one variable can directly affect another, to which it is inherently linked. In statistics, the strength of a relationship between two particular variables can be described by their so-called effect size. Before they conduct experiments, researchers must first decide how many observations they should make of the system being analysed. Since the experimental conditions of different studies can vary widely, the numbers of observations made in different experiments, named sample sizes, can themselves be highly variable. This imbalance can have an inconvenient influence on calculations of the effect size, making it far harder for researchers to assess the strengths of relationships between different variables. If the sizes of samples produced in different experiments are more unbalanced, Dr. Luck shows through his techniques that measurements of the effect size can vary widely, with significant negative consequences for experimental reproducibility. Another aspect that Dr. Luck explores in his study relates to an aspect of complex systems named their degrees of freedom. This term describes the number of values necessary to describe outcomes of an experiment that are free to vary without violating any stringent constraints on the system. In real experiments, there is an inherent trade-off between the benefits of varying certain aspects of the variables enabled by a system's degrees of freedom and the costs required to implement those changes. Again, this damages the reproducibility of experimental results. From this analysis, Dr. Luck has identified two key challenges that must be overcome before the reproducibility crisis can be solved. Firstly, he suggests that researchers must adapt the parameters they use to acquire data in order to account for imbalanced sample sizes. Secondly, his findings indicate the need for researchers to always account for all possible degrees of freedom when measuring systems, regardless of experimental requirements. Ultimately, Dr. Luck argues that resolving these problems will have broad implications for statistics and experimental research as a whole. If both requirements are met, researchers could ensure that their experimental results can be fully recreated in subsequent studies.